Welcome everyone to part nine of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this sci-fi mech robot. So in the previous part, we had set up the model for rigging and in this part, we are actually going to be rigging the robot. As I mentioned in the other parts, if you'd like to purchase the tutorial files and actually get this Blender file with the finished rigged robot and get the final renders and the animation and all of that, then you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store you can also get access to the tutorial files on my Patreon page. And that's a great way to help support me and this channel. Now I did also just want to mention that I do have a rigging in Blender for beginners tutorial. So it's a beginner tutorial on basic rigging in Blender. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, I'll have the link in the description. All right, so let's get started with rigging the robot. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and then move to the solid view. Now these lights are kind of in the way, they're a bit annoying. So what I'm going to do right here in the outliner is just uncheck the lights and camera collection that we created. And then I can also minus this to make it smaller and I can bring the outliner up and just kind of make this a bit smaller. So now we can just see the robot. Now if you press the A key to select all the pieces, you can see that the origin points of some of these objects are not in the very center. And I want this to be the default pose of the robot. Now we are going to be adding an armature and then rigging the different pieces to the bones, but I do just want to set this to the default position of these objects. So press the A key to make sure all of these objects are selected. And then I'm going to press press Control A. And when you press Control A, it's going to bring up the apply settings. And I want to click on all transforms. And so this is going to apply all the transforms. So now this is the default location, rotation and scale of these different objects. Now when you apply all the transforms, it is possible that the robot might look a little bit different. If you hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view and kind of look at the material, the scale of the noise textures might have changed just a little bit, but it shouldn't change that much unless you like scale the objects really big or really small. For instance, you don't need to follow along with this, but if I scale this up really big and then press control A and apply the scale, you can now see that the size of that noise texture has changed. And that's because now that I've applied the scale, the material actually sees this as a giant object. I'm going to press control Z though to undo that. So if you need to, you can select an object and go into the shading tab. And for instance, you could just like go over to the noise texture and you can play around with the scale if you want to. Like right here on the pipe object, you can change the scale of that texture. Um, but I'm going to go back to the layout here. Unless you scaled it up really big or did something like that, then there shouldn't be really any difference when you apply the location, rotation, and scale. And also it is possible that when you scale the transforms, the size of the bevel can change. But again, that shouldn't change very much with how we modeled this because we didn't change any of the scales really big or really small. So if the bevel changed on any of the objects, you can just select the object and then you can drag this bevel amount here to change the size of the bevel. But again with how we modeled this we didn't scale anything up really big or really small and so that should all look fine. And so now if you select these different objects this location of the objects is its default location and the origin point of all these objects are there in the center. And why this is useful is because if you press the A key to select everything you can press Alt R and Alt G and Alt S. That's going to clear the location, rotation, and scale values of the object. Or if you're using bones, it'll clear the poses of the bones and bring it back to its default position. And I just want this to be the default position because this is the default pose of the robot. So I'm now going to press Shift C. Shift C is going to center the 3D cursor into the very center. So I now want to add an armature. So I'm going to press Shift A, and we're going to go right down here to armature, and I'm just going to add the single bone. And you can see here is the armature right here in the outliner. And I just want to click on it and drag it and drop it into the collection because in this collection is all of the pieces of the robot. Now the armature might be hard to see. You can see it's right there. If I press G to grab, I can move that bone over. I'm just going to press escape though because I want the bone to be there in the center. But I want to be able to see this bone better because it's kind of going through the object. So to be able to see this better, I'm going to click right over here on the object data properties on that bone. So it looks like a little stick figure. And I'm going to open 
open up this viewport display. Underneath the viewport display, I can click on in front. And now, no matter what is in front of the bone, you're always going to be able to see the bone. So even though these objects are in front of the bone, you can still see it. And that's very helpful for rigging and animating. So bones have three different modes. If you click right up here, you can see the three different modes. So if you press the tab key, that will go into edit mode. And then you can press the tab key again to go back to object mode. So just like these objects, you can tab into edit mode and tab into object mode. But then bones also have one more mode, and that is the pose mode. And the pose mode is how you pose and actually animate the bones. So you can just click right here and go to the pose mode, or you can press control tab. So control tab will go to pose mode, and you can see if I select this bone, you can just select the bone. Because we are in pose mode, the bone that is selected is blue, and you can see right up here it also says pose mode. So if I press R to rotate, that's going to rotate the bone, and you can see that the bone is always going to rotate from its starting position. So this is where the bone is starting, and then the bone comes out here. So because the bones rotate from the starting of the bone, I want to place this bone where the joint is going to be. And then we are going to parent the objects to the bones, and that way when we rotate the bones, it's also going to move the objects. So this first bone here is going to rotate the body. So I'm going to make it so that when we rotate this bone, the body is going to rotate. And so I want to put this bone at the very middle position of where the body is going to rotate. So to do this, I'm going to press control tab to go back to object mode. Then I'm going to select this object here, the body object, and I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. So I'm going to press the A key to deselect everything. And this object is going to rotate right here where these hips are. So I want to first center the 3D cursor to where this object is going to rotate. So I am in the face select. I'm actually just going to hop back to the vertex select. And then I can hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices right there. Let's navigate over here and then hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop of vertices right there. All right, so I now want the 3D cursor to be in the very center of the selection because that is where the actual body is going to rotate. So I'm going to press shift S and then I'm going to move down to cursor to selected and let go. So you can see the 3D cursor has now moved right up there. If I press 3 on the numpad for side view and go into wireframe, you can see that the 3D cursor is in the very center of that circle there. So I can go back to the solid view. So I'm now going to tab to go back to object mode. So I'm now going to select the bone and I want to press tab to go into edit mode. I don't want to go into pose mode because right now I want to edit the bones. So when you're editing the arm and when you're adding bones and things like that, you use the edit mode. And then when you're animating and actually posing the character or posing the bones, then you want to use pose mode. But for now, we're going to use edit mode. So because this is where the bone rotates, I want the bone to be right here where the 3D cursor is. So just select this bottom circle here, and then I can press shift S and then move your mouse up to the selection to cursor and then let go of the shift and S button. So you can see that now that bone has moved to where the 3D cursor is. So I can now tab to go to object mode and then press control tab that's going to go to edit mode and if I select the bone I can rotate it and you can see it's rotating from where the starting of the bone is so I want to just press the tab key to go back to edit mode of the bones and I'm just going to make sure I select this bone now I want the bone to be rotated over sideways so I'm going to press 3 on the numpad to go to side view and I can press R to rotate and you can see right now it's rotating from the very center there but I don't want to do that I want to rotate it from this position so what I'm going to do is go right here to the transform pivot point and I'm going to change this to the 3d cursor so I can now select the bone press R to rotate and I can type in 9 0 for 90 degrees but then I'm going to hit negative to rotate it by negative 90 and then hit enter and then I can also select this part right here press G to grab click with my mouse wheel and make it a bit smaller so now that bone is pointed forwards so now I'm going to press the tab key again and that'll take me to pose mode or you can also just click right here and go to the pose mode now when I rotate this bone I don't want the bone to rotate back and forth like this because the robot's body is only going to rotate on the x-axis so I only want this bone to rotate on the x-axis so we can actually lock the rotation value 
values of this bone. So I'm going to press the N key to open up the side panel. And if you click over on item, you can see there is a location, rotation, and scale values of the bone. Now I don't want to be able to move the bone around. I don't want to be able to move it around. I only want to rotate it. So right here next to these values, you can see there is a locking there. So if I lock these values by clicking on the lock icon, I can now press G to grab. And you can see I can't move the bone. I can only rotate it. So even though I'm pressing G to grab, I can't actually move the bone. And then if I press R to rotate, I only want to be able to rotate it on the X axis. So right here, I'm going to lock the W and the Y and the Z. So now if I press R to rotate, you can see that the bone is only rotating on the X axis. Even if I try to rotate it back and forth like this, it's only rotating on the X. And also I don't really want to scale the bone, so I might as well just lock these scale values as well. So now I can't scale the bone. So I'm now going to press Control Tab, and that's going to take me to Object Mode. So I want to parent this object to this bone. So I can select the object, hold down the Shift key, and select the bone. I can now press Control Tab, and that is going to take me into Pose Mode and just make sure you select the bone. I know the bone is selected because it has that blue outline. But when we went into pose mode of the bones, this object was still selected, so this object has an orange outline. So just make sure this bone is selected. And then to parent the object to the bone, I'm going to press Control P. So press Control P, and then I can go right down here and I can click on bone. So we are telling this object to be parented to the bone, so when the bone moves, the object is going to move with it. So I can select the bone and I can press R to rotate and you can see now the body and the backpack is rotating and that is exactly what I want. And even if I go back to the object mode, deselect everything, then I can select the bone and again press control tab to go to edit mode. If I try to rotate this, it's going to rotate that body object. So we're basically going to use this rigging method for the entire rest of the character. But we are going to be using IK or inverse kinematics so that we can just kind of grab one bone down here and it's going to move the entire leg. Now after we rig this, I am going to want to have one large bone which is going to move all the other bones. So let's press the tab key that will go into edit mode and then I can press Shift C to center the 3D cursor. So because we're in edit mode of the armature, if I press Shift A, that's automatically just going to add a bone because we can't add anything else. We can only add a bone. So I'm going to click on this bone and I can press G and a Z and we are going to bring it down. And this bone is going to be basically the main controller bone. So it's going to control all of the other bones and we can use this to move the entire robot around. So I'm going to press three on the numpad for side view. And then if I press R to rotate, try to rotate this, you can see it's rotating by the 3D cursor. So I just need to click right here and change this to median point. So I can now press R to rotate. Let's type nine, zero, and then I need to hit negative and enter. That's rotating that way. Then I can also press S to scale and G to grab. And I'm going to stick this right down here. Doesn't need to be anywhere exact, but I do want to put it kind of in the center there of the robot. Now I do want to keep my scene very organized. So I'm also going to rename the bones. So if you select the bone, you can press F2 and this will allow you to rename the bone. So I'm going to rename this bone main controller. All right, main controller, hit enter. And then I want to select this bone and I want to rename it. So I'm going to press F2 to rename the bone. You can also click right here to go to the bone properties. And then you can just rename the bone here if you want to. I'm going to use the shortcut key though, which is F2. So I'm going to hit F2 and I'm going to rename this bone to body. So because this bone is going to control all the other bones, I want to parent this bone to this bone. So make sure you are in edit mode of the bones, and I'm going to first select this bone, then shift and select this bone last. Then I can press control P, and we have two options for the parenting of the bones. We could connect it, but if I connect it, then the top bone is going to be moved down to the bottom bone and connect to it. I want to keep the offset so that this bone is parented to this bone, but there is an offset. Set. And you can see I can tell that that's parented because it has that little checkered line there. So if I now press tab to go to pose mode or click right here and go to the pose mode, I can select this bone. Then if I press G to grab, it's going to move the entire thing because this object is parented to this bone and then this bone is parented to this bone. So this bone will eventually control the entire robot. And then just like with the objects, I can rotate, grab, and scale it by pressing 
R to rotate, G to grab, and S to scale. But then if I want to bring the bones back to their default position, let's say I've kind of posed the robot, but then I want to bring them back to its default position, I can press the A key to select all the bones. I can then press Alt R, that's going to clear any rotations. You can see these rotation values, if I rotate this, the rotation values now have all these numbers. But if I select everything and press Alt R, that will clear any rotations. Alt G that will clear any locations or grabs and then Alt S and that's going to clear any scales. We can bring the robot back to its default position. All right so we're now going to be creating a bone right here for the hip rotation. So I'm going to press the tab key to go back to edit mode. Press shift C that will center the 3D cursor with shift C. Then I'm going to press shift A that's going to add a new bone and then I'm going to select this bone and I can press G to grab and I'm going to bring it right over here. Now just like we did with this bone, I want to first center the 3D cursor to where it's going to rotate, and then I can move the bone to where it's going to rotate. So I can press Control tab that'll bring up the Pi menu, I can go to Object Mode and let go, or you can also just click right here and go back to Object Mode. So I'm going to zoom in right here, and I'm first going to do this rotation first. So it's going to be this one, which is rotating back and forth like this. So what I'm going to do is select this object and just press H to hide it to kind of get it out of the way, and then I can also select this object and press H to hide it to get it out of the way. So I'm going to select this object here. I can press tab to go into edit mode and I want to put the 3D cursor right in the center here. So I'm going to go right here to the edge select and then I can select this edge, hold down the shift key and select this edge. I can now press shift S, move my mouse down to the cursor to select it and let go, and you can see the cursor is in the center there. So I can now press tab to go to object mode, just select this bone, and then I can press tab to go to edit mode. So as I talked about earlier, the bone rotates from the bottom or the very center of the bone, so I want to select this circle right here which is on the bottom of this bone. Then I'm going to press shift S, move your mouse up and let go, and that is going to bring that part of the bone to the 3D cursor. And then I want this bone to also be pointed straight out, so I'm going to select the top circle, press shift S, bring your mouse up to the selection to cursor and let go, and the bone is actually on top of itself so you can't see it. If I press G to grab and then bring this out on the x-axis, I'm just going to bring the bone out now. So now the bone is perfectly straight back and forth. So I'm now going to press control tab, let's move down to pose mode and then let go, or you can also just click right here and go to pose mode, and just like this bone, I want to lock the rotation of this bone. So I don't want to be able to move the bone, so let's click on all of these locations to lock it. I can also click on these ones to lock the scale as well. And then if I press R to rotate and Z on the Z axis, I only want to be able to rotate this back and forth on the Z. So I am going to lock all of these values except the Z. So if I press R to rotate, even if I try to rotate it up and down, it's only going to rotate on the Z axis. That's exactly what I want. So I can now press Control tab that'll go back to object mode. I can press Alt H. Alt H is going to unhide all the objects. And then when I rotate this bone, I want this object and this object to rotate with it because I want to rotate these like that and they're going to rotate, but they're going to rotate from the center of that bone. So I'm going to select this object, hold down the shift key, select this object, and then hold down the shift key and select the bone last or the armature last. I'm now going to press control tab that'll take me to pose mode and you can see these objects are still selected but we are in pose mode and then just make sure you select this bone and again I can press control P and we want to click on bone. So now if I press R to rotate and kind of rotate this you can see that that is rotating correctly. So now the hips are kind of rotating back and forth and so we'll be able to use this to kind of make the robot walk around if we want to. So I'm just going to press alt R that will clear any rotation values. And with this bone still selected, I'm going to press F2 and we're going to rename this bone. And I'm going to rename this bone to hip rotation. Now because we have two legs on either side, I'm going to be using a symmetrize feature in Blender. And what it's going to do is going to symmetrize the armature so that the armature on one side will be copied over to the other side. So after I type in hip rotation, I'm going to type period capital R, so dot capital R. And that is very important because Blender is going to use that data in the name to duplicate the bone and mirror it over. So hip rotation dot R, make sure it has a dot R at the end and hit enter. And again, if you want to, 
right over here if I open this up. If you go to the bone properties, you can rename the bone right there as well, or you can press F2 to rename the bone. And then let's press Control Tab to go to object mode. I'm just gonna select the armature, and then I can press Tab just to go to edit mode. I'm gonna select this bone right here, hold down the Shift key, select this bone, and I can press Control P. And again, we don't want it to be connected because if we choose connected, it's gonna move the bone over. I don't want that, so I'm gonna press Control Z to undo that. I'm gonna press Control P and I want to keep the offset. So it's gonna be parented, but it will still keep the offset in between the bones. So I can now press Control Tab, go to Pose Mode, click on the Pose Mode, and if I move this bone, it's gonna move all the bones. So I can Control Tab to go back to Object Mode. So I'm now going to be adding the bones for the upper and the lower legs. So before I add a bone for the upper legs, I can center the 3D cursor where I want it to be. So I'm gonna select this object right here, this is the upper legs, and I'm gonna Tab to go to Edit Mode. And then just deselect everything, and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and just select that loop of vertices, and then hold down the Shift and Alt key and select that loop of vertices. I can now hold down the Shift S button, move my my mouse to cursor to selected and let go. So the 3D cursor is going to be in the very center there. So I can press tab to go to object mode. I can then select the armature and then I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode. So now if I press shift A, the bone is going to be added right where the 3D cursor is. Now I want the bone to be going out perfectly straight over this way. So just select the bone and then I'm going to click right here on the transform pivot point and I'm going to change this to 3D cursor. So the bone is going to now rotate from the 3D cursor. So I can press R to rotate. Let's rotate this on the x-axis, and I can type in 9, 0 for 90 degrees, and then I want to hit negative to rotate it over by negative 90, and then hit enter. So now the bone is perfectly straight going back. And then I'm going to select this right here, select that circle, press G to grab, click with your mouse wheel and bring it back on the Y axis. And then I can press tab to go back to object mode. So I now want to center the 3D cursor where this join is. So I'm going to select this object and I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode and then just make sure everything is deselected. I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select one of those rings of vertices right there. So that is where the center is going to be. That's where it's going to rotate. So I can now hold down the Shift S button, go to Cursor to Selected, let go, and then I can Tab to go to Object Mode. Then I can select the armature again, and I can Tab to go to Edit Mode. Now if I pressed Shift S, move my mouse up, you can see that's going to move over, and I don't want it to move over because now that's slanted. So I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo this. So I want to bring this to the center, but I want to keep it straight. So to do this, I'm going to press 7 on the numpad for top view, and if you look right here, you can see we are already set the transport pivot point to 3D cursor. So I'm going to press S to scale, but then I only want to scale it on the Y axis because I want to scale it back. So I'm just going to press S to scale again. I'm going to hit Y to scale it on the Y axis, and then I can type 0 and enter. So now if I press 3 on the numpad for side view, hold down the Z button, go to wireframe, you can see that is in the very center, and that's exactly what I want. So both of these bones, both sides of these bones are in the very center of that joint. So I now want to extrude out a bone because I want to have the upper leg and then the lower leg connect to the upper leg. So in edit mode, I'm going to select this circle right here. I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm going to bring this down. And I don't want to bring it down exact because if I try to eyeball it, it might be just a little bit off. So I'm going to stick it right here. So I can now tab to go to object mode. I'm just going to hold down the Z button, go to the solid view, navigate up here, and I'm going to select this object and then I can press tab to go to edit mode. And I want this to be in the very center. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, select that loop right there, navigate over here, hold down the Shift and Alt key, and select that one right there. And then I can press Shift S, go to Cursor to select it, and let go. So now the 3D cursor is right there in the center. So now let's press Tab to go to Object Mode. I'm going to select this bone right here, and then I'm going to press Tab to go to Edit Mode. Now again, if I brought this over here, it would be kind of slanted, and I don't really want that. And just to show you, I'm actually going to navigate right up here. I'll actually move over here. So I'm going to press S to scale, but I don't want to scale it on the X axis. So I'm going to press Shift X. So now that I press Shift X, it's going 
going to scale it down or bring it in on the Z axis and the Y axis, but not the X axis. So I can type zero and then enter. And this way, if I select this bone, I can press seven for top view. And you can see that bone isn't slanted. It's perfectly straight with these other bones. But if I press three on the numpad for side view and zoom in here, you can see it is right in the center of that joint. So that is exactly what I want. Now I want to rename these bones. So I already renamed this one and you can see I renamed it hip rotation dot R. So I'm going to select this bone right here and I'm going to click right here to rename it. And I'm going to rename this one to upper leg and then dot capital R. Make sure it has the dot capital R at the end. That is important and then click on this bone here and this bone I'll just click right here to rename this and I'm going to rename this one to lower leg dot r make sure it has the dot r so we have the upper leg and the lower leg and they both end in dot r and this one also the hip rotation ends in dot r and then let's press control tab and then go into the pose mode or click right here and go to pose mode and again i want to lock the rotation of these bones because if i press r to rotate i only want to rotate these on the x so i'm going to lock all the locations and also click and drag down to lock all of the scale and then i only want this to to move on the X axis. So I'm going to lock the Y, the Z and the W. So now if I press R to rotate, it's only going to rotate on the X. I can also click on this bone and do the same thing. So click and drag to lock the locations, lock the W and also lock the Y and the Z rotations and then click and drag and lock the scale. So now if I press R to rotate, you can see it's only going to rotate on the X axis. So I can now press control tab. That's going to go back to object mode and I want to parent the objects to those bones. So I'm first going to select this object, shift select the, the armature, then I can press control tab to go to pose mode and just make sure you have this bone selected. I can now press control P and let's click on bone. And I want to go back to object mode now, so press control tab, that'll go to object mode or you can click right here and go to object mode. A to D select everything. Let's select the lower leg and then shift and select the armature and then control tab. That's going to go into pose mode. I can just select the lower leg. Let's press control P to parent and I can click on bone. All right. So now for the fun part, if you press R to rotate, you can see that's going to rotate around and you can see it's rotating by the 3d cursor. So I'm going to click right here and just change it back to the median point. I can press R to rotate that's rotating and that looks really cool. That is very cool. It looks correct. And then I can select this one and press R to rotate and that is working as well. So then I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything. Let's press alt R and alt G and alt S to clear those values. Now, if I select this bone and press R to rotate, you can see it's not working properly. It's only rotating that little object in there. And so I want to parent this bone to this bone so that it'll move the entire leg. So I'm just going to press control tab due to object mode. I'm just going to select these bones here and then I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode. So I can now select this bone, hold down the shift key and select this bone and this bone is selected last. And then I can press control P and we want to keep the offset so they stay where they are. Now I can press control tab move my mouse down, go to pose mode, and I can just select this bone and I can press R to rotate and you can see it's going to rotate that. So it's actually going to kind of pivot the hips or pivot that leg, but then I can select this bone and press R to rotate and that is going to rotate correctly. And then of course, this bone is parented to this bone. So I can rotate this one around and that's gonna move the entire thing. So I can double tap the A key to select everything and press Alt R and Alt G and Alt S to clear those values. So let's press Control S again to save. And then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode of the bones. And I want to make the ankle bone and the foot bone. So I'm going to select this circle right here and press three on the numpad for side view. Hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe. So I want to have two bones, one for the ankle and then another for the foot. So I'm going to press E to extrude. Let's bring this down on the Z axis and just bring it to about there. And then I want to put this right in the very center there so that it can rotate where the ankle is. So I'm going to press control tab, 
go down to actually go over here to object mode and then I'm going to select this object and press tab to go to edit mode. So I can hold down the Z button, go back to solid view and I just want to select one of these loops so I can hold down the alt key, select that loop and I might as well just hold down the shift and alt key and select that loop as well. All right, so I can now press shift S, move my mouse down and let go so the 3D cursor is in the very center there. So I can now press tab to go to object mode. I can select the bones and press tab to go to edit mode. So just like we did with this object, I want to scale this down, but I don't want to bring it back and forth. So just select that circle, and then I want to go right here on the transform pivot point, and I want to change this to the 3D cursor. So I can now press S to scale, but again, I don't want to scale it on the X axis, so I'm going to press Shift X. Now it won't use the X axis. I can bring it down, and I'm going to type in 0 and enter. So now if I press 3 on the numpad for side view, you can see it's right in the center there. So I'll hold down the Z button, go into wireframe, and for the last bone, the one for the foot, I can just press E to extrude, hit Z to bring it down the Z axis, and I'm just going to place that there, and maybe make it a little bit bigger. All right, hold down the Z button, go to solid view, and I can tab to go back to object mode. So now we have the ankle bone and the foot bone. So let's tab to go to edit mode again, and I'm going to select this bone here, and I'm going to rename this. So this bone right Right here where the ankle is I'm gonna go right here this is the bone properties I'm gonna click right here or you can also press F2 to rename it and I'm gonna rename this bone to ankle dot R so ankle and then dot capital R it is very important that it has the dot capital R at the end and then I'm going to select the foot bone right here I can press F2 and I'm going to rename this one to foot and then again dot capital R and enter so I'm now going to create the inverse kinematics, or IK for short, and when we add the inverse kinematics, I'll just be able to select one bone, press G to grab, and when I move it, that bone, it's going to move the entire leg. So that's what the inverse kinematics does. So I'm going to select the ankle bone here and make sure you are in edit mode when you do this. So just select the ankle bone. So I can press Shift D, that's gonna duplicate the bone, but then I can right click so it stays in the center. So now we have two bones on top of each other. Now now I want to rename this bone that I just duplicated, so I'm going to click right here to rename it, and I'm going to rename this to foot, and then I'm going to type IK and then dot R. And why I'm renaming it to IK is just so that I can remember that this is the IK bone. And then again, it's the right side, so make sure that it says dot R at the very end, dot capital R. Now right now, if I press G to grab, you can see there's that little line there, and that is showing it that this bone is parented to the other bone. And I want to clear the parent. So with that bone still selected, I'm going to press Alt P, and then I'm going to click on Clear Parent. So if I press G to grab, you can see that bone doesn't have any checkered line. I can just press Escape so it hops back to that position. So now let's add the inverse kinematics. So I'm going to press Control Tab, move down to Pose Mode, and let go. So we are now in Pose Mode. And then I'm going to click right here and make sure that the ankle.r is selected. You can see it says ankle.r, so it's this bone here. I don't want to select the IK bone. I want to select the ankle one. So I'm now going to add the inverse kinematics. So to do this, I'm going to click on the bone constraint properties right down here and make sure you're in pose mode when you do this. I'm going to click on add bone constraint and I'm going to add the inverse kinematics or IK for short. So now we need to choose a target on the inverse kinematics, and the target is just going to be the armature. So if you click right here, you can start to type in armature, and this is just the entire rig, so it's the entire armature. So I can click on that. If you open this up, you can see there is the armature. So just make sure you select the armature in the target. So now we can select a bone within the armature. So I'm going to click on the bone here, and then I can start to type in IK, and I want to select the foot ik.r. So that is that other bone that we added right there that we duplicated. Now when I do this you can see that the bone moves way up here and that is because of the used tail. And so the used tail is going to make this bone be at the starting of the other bone which is the target bone. Now I don't want this. I want this bone to be back where it was. So I'm going to uncheck the used tail and that's going to fix that issue. So it's now back to where it was. Now if I select this bone right here, this bone is the foot ik.r. You can see it says foot ik.r. If I press G to grab, you can see that the IK is working, so the inverse kinematics is working. There is a problem though, it is moving the entire thing, and I only want it to move the legs. So I'm going to click right here again, and just select the ankle.r so it's right on top of that bone. So to fix this, I want to change the chain length. 
So on default, the chain length is set to zero, and this is just going to tell it to move around all of the bones. But instead, I only want it to move this bone and this bone, so the lower leg and the upper leg. So to, I can just change the chain length to a value of two. Now if I click on the other bone, the foot ik.r, I can press G to grab, and you can see it's only going to move the lower leg and the upper leg. So that is exactly what I want. So I can now move this around, and that's working properly. Now I don't want this to be moved back and forth on the x-axis so just like all the other bones I want to lock the location rotation and scale so I want this bone to be able to move on the y and also on the z but not the x so I'm going to click on this lock right here next to the x location now if I press g to grab I can't move it back and forth on the x but I can move it on the y and the z so that is working correctly and then I do want to be able to rotate it because this bone right here is also going to rotate the ankle but I don't want to be able to rotate it side to side I only want to be able to rotate it on the x-axis so on the rotation I'm going to lock all of the rotation values except the x so I can now press R to rotate and that's working correctly and then I'm also gonna lock the scale values because I don't want to scale the bone now I want this foot IK bone to rotate the ankle because I don't want to have to select a different bone I just want to be able to use this bone to move the leg and then also rotate the ankle so to do this I'm gonna select this other bone here here and this is the ankle dot R so I'm now going to click on add bone constraint and I'm going to add a copy rotation and I'm going to scroll down here now again for the target I just want to select the armature so you can just start to type in armature select the armature so the armature is just the entire armature with all the bones now this bone here that we select that is what it's going to copy the rotation from so I'm going to click on this bone here and I'm going to type in IK and I want to select the foot IK because I want this bone to copy the rotation of the other bone so now if I select the other bone the foot IK R, I can press G to grab and then R to rotate and you can see it's moving the other bone and also right here I can click on this and I'm just going to change this back to the median point so I can now rotate that and the other bone is rotating with it you can't really see it because it's on top of each other but it is moving that other bone so I'm going to press alt R and alt G to bring that back so now, just like these other objects, I need to parent the objects to the bones. So I'm going to press Control Tab. That's going to go to Object Mode. And then I'm going to select this object right here. So this is the ankle. Then I'm going to hold down the Shift key and select the armature. And then I can press Control Tab to go into Edit Mode. Actually, we want to go into Pose Mode. So make sure you are in the Pose Mode. So now I'm just going to click right here and make sure you select the ankle.r bone. So now that I have that selected, I'm going to press Control P. We want to set Parent to Bone. And then I'm going to press Control Tab to go back to object mode. So I'm now going to select the foot object, hold down the Shift key and select the armature. And then I can press Control Tab, that'll go to pose mode. I can select this bone right here, that's the foot bone. And I can press Control P and I want to set parent to bone. And then this object right here, or this bone, I want it to only be able to rotate on the x-axis. So I want to click and drag, and that's gonna lock the location. Also click and drag and lock the scale. And then I wanna rotate all of the rotations except the x. So we're gonna lock all of these other ones, but not the x. So if I press R to rotate, now the foot can only rotate back and forth. Now if I select the main controller bone in pose mode, I can press G to grab, and I want this bone to move the entire robot but you can see it's not moving the entire robot so I'm going to press tab and that'll go into edit mode of the armature and I'm actually going to press control tab go back to the object mode because I want to press a to deselect I don't want this to be affected this object here so I'm just going to select the bones so now the bones are just selected and then I can just press tab and that's going to go into edit mode of the bones so now I just want to select the foot IK you can see it's a little bit hard to select sometimes you can't really select it so you might need to hold down the Z button go to wireframe and then you you can just select it so make sure you select the foot ik dot r and i want this bone to be parented to this bone so select that bone hold down the shift key and select the main controller i can press Control p but again i want to keep the offset so now I can just select this bone, I can press Control tab and then I can go to the pose mode. And now if I press G to grab, you can see the main controller is gonna move the entire thing. But then if I rotate this over, this bone can still rotate and we can move it around and it's gonna move the leg. So I'll select everything and I'm gonna press Alt R and Alt G 
to clear the movements. Now make sure you are still in pose mode of the bones and there is one problem that I wanna show you that we need to fix. So if I select this bone right here, I'm actually gonna hold down the Z button, go to solid view. This bone right here is going to rotate the hip rotation. But if I rotate this, you can see there's a problem here because this isn't actually rotating the foot. And that is because the inverse kinematics that we set up. But this is actually really easy to fix. So I'm gonna press Alt R to clear the rotations and then I can press tab to go into edit mode. So in the bones edit mode, I'm just gonna hold down the Z button, go into the wireframe, and I wanna just select the foot IK.R. So don't select the ankle, select the foot IK.R. Then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm going to select the hip rotation. I can then press control P and I wanna keep the offset. And that way this bone is parented to that bone. So I can press control tab, move my mouse down into the pose mode, hold down the Z button, go back into the solid view. And I can just select this bone and I can press R to rotate. And you can see now the foot is rotating because it is parented to that bone. So I can rotate the hips and then I can select the foot IK and I can rotate this as well. And I can rotate the foot as well, rotate the ankle and rotate the foot. Let's press A to select everything and then press Alt R and Alt G to clear that. Now, when I am in the pose mode and I'm animating the robot, I don't wanna see these other bones because I'm not really gonna use these other bones Bones because these bones are just moving around these objects, but these bones aren't actually the controller bones. So I just want to hide the bones that I'm not going to use so I can only see the bones which are actually going to control the robot. So to do this, make sure you're in pose mode, and then I'm going to select this bone here, and I can press H to hide it. So it's still there, but it's just hidden from our view. I can then select this bone, press H to hide it, and if you want to unhide them, you can just press Alt H, but I want to keep them hidden. And then also, I want to select the ankle.r because I am not going to be using this bone to animate the character, so I can press H to hide that bone as well because I'm just going to be using the foot IK to animate the leg. So those are just the bones that we're going to use to actually animate and pose the character. But if you press tab to go into edit mode, you're still able to see those bones. But just in pose mode, you won't be able to see those extra bones that we don't need. All right, so the rigging of this leg is finished, but I want to rig the other leg. And so we're going to use that symmetrize feature to duplicate these bones and put them over here. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode of the armature. And then I'm going to press A to deselect everything. And I just want to select the bones which are on this side. So press B for the box select. Just box select all of these bones here. I don't want to select the bones in the middle. I just want to select the bones over here on this side. And all of these bones, we renamed it to dot R. So really quick, just go right back over here to the bone properties and click on all these bones and make sure they all have a dot R at the very end. If they don't have the dot R at the end, then they're not going to work properly. They're not going to semi tries over properly. So press B for the box select, box select all these bones. And then to symmetrize it, I can click on armature. And let's go right down here and I can click on symmetrize. So because we had the dot R in the names, Blender could recognize that this was the right side. And so it duplicated it and it put them over to the other side. And now if you look at the names of the other side, you can see it has a dot L instead of a dot R. And the dot L is for left. So this is the right side and this is the left side. Now, just like I did on this side, I need to parent these objects to these bones. So let's do that. So I'm going to press tab to go into pose mode, and I actually need to press Alt H. Alt H is going to unhide those bones that we hid because we do need to see them for now. So now what I'm going to do is press control tab. That's going to take me back to object mode, and we can just start up here. So I'm going to zoom in here and just select this object right here. So this is the hip joint to left. Then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and select the armature and I can press control tab. That'll go into pose mode. And then I just want to select this bone right here. I can now press control P and we want to click on bone to parent that object to the bone. And I can rotate this. You can see that's following along. All right, so press control tab to go to object mode. Let's click on this one. So this is the upper leg left. Then hold down the shift key and select the armature. And I can press control tab to go into the pose mode. Let's also press Control S to save the project. And I now want to select this bone. So this is the upper leg.l. And then I can press Control P again to parent it. And we want to parent it to bone. So now this object is parented to that bone. All right, Control Tab to go to object mode. Let's just make this a bit smaller. I'm going to select this object right here. Hold down the Shift key and select the armature. And then Control Tab. 
to go into pose mode, we're just going to select that bone right there and then control P. And again, we want to click on bone and then let's press control tab to go back to object mode. I'm going to navigate down here, select the ankle left and then hold down the shift key, select the armature. I'm going to press control tab. And then this one again, I want to parent it to the ankle. I don't want to parent it to the foot IK. I want to parent it to the ankle. And if it's hard to select, you can go into wireframe and then click and it should make it easier to select. So make sure the ankle L is selected. I can press control P and then I want to click on bone. All right, control tab to go to object mode. We're down to the last one. So select the foot, shift, select the armature, control tab, and that's going to go into pose mode. Select the foot bone, the foot dot L, and then control P and we want to parent to bone. All right, control tab to go to object mode, A to deselect everything. We're just going to select the bones right there and then let's press control tab to go to pose mode. And then I want to hide those extra bones that we don't need. So this one here, hide that with H, select this one, H to hide it. This one here, H to hide it. And this one as well, H to hide that bone as well. And then also select the ankle bones. Those are the ones with the IK on them. They're yellow because they have the IK, H to hide that. And also right over here, select the ankle left and H to hide that. So now let's just check to make sure it works. So I can select the foot IK.L, press G to grab, and you can see that's going to work properly. That's really good. I can select the foot left, rotate that. That is good. So that's working. And then also I can select this one and I can rotate that and that is looking very good. But then even though I rotate this, I can still rotate this and that's going to work properly. And then if I select the main controller, I can press G to grab and move that all around. Now there is just one more thing in here. You can see that these objects haven't been parented to anything. So let's press the A key to select all the bones and I can press Alt R and Alt G and Alt S to clear that movement. So I'm going to press control tab to go to object mode. So for these two hip bones which weren't moving along, I just want to parent them to the main controller. So just select the hip joint one dot left, it's this one here, and then also hold down the shift key and select the hip joint one right. All right, so we're just selecting these two objects, then hold down the shift key and select the armature. And I can press control tab to go into pose mode, and I just want to select the main controller. Then I can press control P and I want to parent a bone. So now if I rotate this, it's going to move those objects. So that is really good. Let's press Alt R and Alt G to clear that. So we are almost done with the rigging, but we still need to rig the neck and the head. So I'm going to press control tab to go to object mode. I can press A to deselect everything. So I'm now going to zoom in here to the neck and I'm going to select the neck object. And then I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. So I'm now going to hold down the alt key and select this loop of vertices. And then I'm going to press shift S, move my mouse down and let go. So the cursor is going to be in the center of that selection. And that is where I want to add the bone. So I'm going to press tab to go to object mode, just select the armature, and then I can press tab to go into edit mode of the armature. Now, because the 3D cursor is right there, I can press shift A, and it's just gonna add the bone right there. And then I'm going to select the very top of the bone that we added, and I'm gonna press shift S, move my mouse up and let go, and that's gonna stick the top of the bone right there at the same spot. So now it looks invisible, that's because it's just squished down into the same spot. So I can press G to grab, and I'm gonna bring this over on the Y axis, and I'm just gonna bring that out. So this is gonna be the neck bone, so when we rotate this, it's gonna rotate the head back and forth. So I will select this bone, press F2, that'll rename it, and I'm gonna rename this to neck. So then let's press control tab. I'm going to go down to pose mode and let go. So if I press R to rotate, you can see it's going to rotate from the center there, but I just want it to rotate on the Z axis. So right here on the transform, I'm going to lock the location and also lock the scale. And then I'm going to lock the rotations, but I'm going to not lock the Z rotation. So if I press R to rotate or G to grab, you can see it's only going to rotate on the Z axis because that is how the neck can rotate. So I'm now going to press control tab to go to object mode. Let's select the neck object and then shift select the armature. Press control tab again to go to pose mode and just select the neck bone. I can press control P and we want to click on bone. So now if I select this, press R to rotate, you can see it's going to rotate the neck. All right, so now we just need to add another bone for the head rotation. So let's press control tab. That'll take me to object mode. 
A to deselect everything. Now we want this head to rotate right there where that little circle is there. So I'm going to select the neck object and I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode. And then I'm going to click right here to go to the face select. I'm going to select this face, navigate over here, hold down the shift key and select this face. And then I can press shift S, move my mouse down and let go. So the 3D cursor is right in there where the neck is going to rotate or where the head is going to rotate. So I can tab to go to object mode let's select the armature and then tab to go to edit mode a to deselect everything and we're going to press shift a that's going to add a bone and i can click on this bone here and then i'm going to rename it so i can press f2 and i'm going to rename this bone to head so this is the head bone and if you want to you can click right over here on the bone properties and rename that bone right there and then I do want to bring it up so it's not just inside the head. So I'm going to select the end of it, press G and Z, and we are going to bring that up and stick it right there. Now I only want the bone to rotate back and forth like this. So I'm going to press Control Tab. Let's go to Pose Mode, let go, and just select this bone. And then I'm going to lock the location and also lock the scale. So click on the little lock icon, but then I only want to rotate it on the X. So I'm going to lock all the other rotation values, but not the X. So I can press Control Tab tab to go to object mode. Let's select the head and then hold down the shift key and select the armature. I can press control tab and then I just want to select the head and I can press control P and we're going to set parent to the bone. So now if I rotate this, that is going to rotate the head. Now if I rotate the neck, I also want the neck to rotate the head, but you can see that's not working right now. So I'm going to press control tab to go to object mode. I just want to select the bones and then I'll press tab to go to edit mode of the armature. I can just select the head bone, hold down the shift key and select the neck bone because I want the neck bone to move the head bone. Then I can press control P and we're going to make parent but keep the offset. And then when I rotate the body, I also want the body to move the neck around. So I'm going to select the neck, hold down the shift key and select the body. And then I can press control P and we want to make parent and keep the offset. All right, so I can now press control tab and then I'm gonna go down to the pose mode and I can just check to make sure everything works. So I can rotate the body bone, that's really good. I can also rotate the neck bone, okay. And then I can also rotate the head bone. And then if I want to move out the legs, I can rotate these bones here, move out the legs. I can also select these bones here, the IK bones, press G to grab and R to rotate. That is good. I can also rotate that as well, but then I can rotate these and that's gonna work properly. And I can rotate this one and just ch check to make sure that works, press G to grab. That works as well, and I can also rotate this as well. All right, and then I can select this one, and this is going to rotate everything. And so everything works properly, and so the rig is now finished. So I'm gonna press the A key to select everything, select all those bones, and I can press Alt-R and Alt-G and Alt-S to clear the movements of the bones. I can press Control-Tab to go back to object mode, and I'm just gonna press Control-S to save. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've been enjoying this so far. Now we still have one more part. So in the last part in part 10, we are going to be rendering out a final render of this robot. And then we're also going to be animating a walk cycle in the next part. And then we will render out the frames. And in Blender's video editor, we will compile the frames together to a final animation. So when part 10 is released, it'll be right up there on the end screen. And also the link will be in the description. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the last part part 10.